Hello people, in this video we want to address this frozen shoulder orthopedics uh, subject. So basically the other name is adhesive capsulitis. What is this? Adhesive capsulitis. Okay, so it is also called as shoulder of 50s, periarthritis shoulder. But this term periarthritis shoulder they are not very fond of. Okay, because they are saying that there is nothing called as periarthritis. Okay, there is no word like that. So basically you can use the word adhesive capsulitis. So you can see here the soft tissue is affected. So in the chapter uh, affections of soft tissue, this uh, this uh, condition they have given in the textbook, right? So this is, uh, you can see what has happened here. The capsule, the joint capsule is kind of inflamed, okay? This will lead to adhesion. So it is ca causing adhesion. So adhesive capsulitis, okay? So frozen shoulder is also called as periarthritis shoulder, which they don't like. They are saying that this terminology should not be used, okay? And uh, why does it happen? They are saying it is idiopathic, but now they think that it is because of injury that it has happened. You should take a detailed history. Maybe they have had some injury or insult. Okay, what has happened here? There is inflammation of the shoulder, resulting in adhesion. So the name adhesive capsulitis, and this will respond to physiotherapy. Though some people are saying that it will resolve by itself, uh, they believe that no, you have to give treatment. Okay, now they believe that you have to give treatment. Okay, so what is this inflammation doing to the uh, joint? Uh, basically, it is causing degeneration. The inflammation is leading to degeneration of the shoulder joint capsule. Okay, and to the soft tissue surrounding it, there is injury. So there is injury to the joint capsule and to the soft tissues which are surrounding it. Okay, uh, sorry, degeneration. So this is the actual cause. So this will lead to adhesion. Okay. So look at this guy here. They have shown. So uh, there is uh, the shoulder joint. They have shown here and they have shown buildup of scar tissue restricting the movement inside the joint resulting in pain and severely limiting motion. Adhesive capsulitis. Now what will you write under cause of cause for the frozen shoulder if they ask you periarthritis shoulder if they ask you in the exam what will you write or adhesive capsulitis they'll ask you in the exam you will see that the cause is unknown or there could be a history preceding uh, trauma these people usually will be diabetics so that's why they said it's a disease of the 50s is it it's an unknown etiology basically or there could be history of trauma you should always take careful history there could be really some trauma that these people have had Okay, this is the current concept that there is nothing called as periarthritis. Basically, there is immobility because of an injury or insult and uh, this injury might have uh, healed. Okay, this injury might have healed uh, leave, leaving behind stiffness. Okay, so you should take detailed history. So, this is an injury that might have healed. So, this is the current concept for the cause. Okay. Um, so this, uh, what will happen because of this uh, injury and healing, there is loss of resilience of the joint capsule. So joint capsule is affected and there is adhesion between its folds. So this is the pathogenesis, what exactly is happening because of the, because of the injury, degeneration, inflammation, degeneration, loss of resilience of joint tissue, adhesion between the folds, etc, etc is happening, leading to adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. Okay, that is the current cap, uh, current um, concept okay now let us go to the clinical features what will be the clinical features these people will be uh, 50s maybe diabetic we'll add it here okay uh, they they'll have pain and stiff, stiffness in the shoulder yeah anybody will say this right in the exam you will write pain and stiffness in the shoulder will be there pain is worst at night okay one more point we got pain is worst at night and the stiffness is limited to yeah the stiffness is limited to abduction and internal rotation so they cannot do this they cannot abduct wait abduct is more like abduct they cannot abduct and they cannot internally rotate okay these two they can't do so they can't do abduction and internal rotation who can't do frozen shoulder can you say frozen shoulder frozen shoulder cannot, cannot abduct, abduct and, and internal internal rotate internally rotate internally rotate yeah thank you so the pain is present at all times. See the later, okay, this is initially, okay, initial stages, early stages, the pain is worst at night, wait. So early and late, two things they are saying here. Early, uh, the pain is worst at night, later the pain is present at all times and the movement of the shoulder is severely limited. All movements looks like are limited with the shoulder, okay. Tenderness around the shoulder, uh, which is more than one spot, more than one tender spot, more than one tender spot will be there when you examine, when you touch, they'll have more than one tender spot. This is what a textbook says about frozen shoulder. What are the clinical features now? Can you say 50 year old, diabetic, pain and stiffness in the shoulder joint could have a history. Wait, we'll see this. Could have old history of 
trauma right injury healed kind of a thing in early stages what will be there there will be pain in the night and lif- limited lim- stiffness which is limited to abduction and internal rotation later the pain will be at all times and movement of the shoulder is severely limited I, when this is later and whenever you check the tenderness they will have tenderness in more than one place more than one spot what's the differential diagnosis you should know no always you should write one differential diagnosis for everything so what is the differential you should not confuse it with tuberculosis because sometimes sometimes this tuberculosis is very rare to affect the shoulder joint but if it affects there may not be any pus obviously tuberculosis when you see pus no this is not going to cause pus it's going to cause more of granuloma caseous necrosis so this is called as carie sicca what is called as carie sicca tuberculosis of shoulder joint not of uh, not not what you are reading okay shoulder joint tuberculosis if there is no pus carie sicca and uh, this can be a differential diagnosis for frozen shoulder so frozen shoulder is more common tuberculosis of the shoulder joint is rare tuberculosis is common in india tuberculosis of uh, femur uh, spine and all is common yes but shoulder joint is not so common okay but it is a dd for frozen shoulder what will you do for these people if you want you can take an x ray and when what will you see in the x ray rare frac rare fraction of the head of the humerus rare fraction means reduction in density reduction in density in the head of humerus degenerative changes may be seen in this acromioclavicular joint see in the shoulder joint you what is it, it is glenohumeral joint right shoulder joint is glenohumeral acromioclavicular is this joint between this this one this joint acromioclavicular joint also will have some degenerative change okay that is the investigation if you want you can do how will you treat see some treat some th- textbooks are saying that you can uh, it is self limiting which is a good thing if it is self limiting so the inflammation will subside and then but the problem is it can uh, leave a painless shoulder but it can still remain stiff which is a bad thing right it can still remain stiff anyways the current concept is that unless this is treated the stiffness does not improve and the shoulder does not become normal so this is what they are saying this is the current concept this is what even uh, this textbook is saying stiffness can does not improve see pain may improve but stiffness does not improve that is why they are calling it as sh- frozen shoulder now it makes sense right because what is happening he has no pain he is not coming with painful shoulder he is just saying it's frozen i can't move it it's stiff okay no laughing so basically it is now we have understood why it is frozen shoulder now <clears throat> how will you treat it analgesics pain killer you will give but if they have pain you can give foam hot fomentation so hot fomentation is uh, going to relax the muscles and all that right hot fomentation physiotherapy very important to give physiotherapy that was then the definition itself if you remember go back here see usually response to physiotherapy in the definition itself they put this right stiffness can be prevented by continuous shoulder mobilizing exercises shoulder mobilizing exercises what else did they say here intraarticular injection of hydrocortisone so if you want to reduce the inflammation or something you can give a steroid injection into the joint hydrocortisone okay so that is yet another therapy fine then let's move on we are just summarizing the treatment of frozen shoulder anti inflammatory drugs same thing they told you analgesics you can give anti inflammatory drugs you can give then nsaids gradual and active mobilization of the shoulder yes same thing they told you exercise physiotherapy heat therapy ultrasound therapy physiotherapy mainly they will give ultrasound okay so that the muscles will relax manipulation under anesthesia following uh, followed by exercise therapy this is now a little bit complex it became under anesthesia you should manipulate okay infiltration with corticosteroids yes this we saw natural course of the disease it slowly recovers in 2 years but they said that pain can go but stiffness may not go but looks like they are saying that even uh, stiffness can go is it but these people have to keep exercising mobilizing and trying everything okay it looks like that is the natural course of the disease you can also do arthroscopic surgery okay so this is about frozen shoulder let's take a recap so frozen shoulder also called as adhesive capsulitis basically this is also called as periarthritis shoulder which should actually not be used there's no term called te- periarthritis this is because of soft tissue uh, having problem okay not the bones exactly 
so this is uh, basically idiopathic or injury of the caps uh, of uh, of the joint okay so this will lead to what inflammation capsular inflammation um, of the shoulder resulting in adhesion so this is uh, usually respond to physiotherapy the inflammation here would actually cause the degeneration of the capsule and the soft tissue surrounding it the cause usually is unknown but they are saying that there could be a history of preceding trauma and it is more common in diabetics so because of this injury which has actually healed there will be loss of resilience of the joint capsule and there will be adhesion between its folds <clears throat> so basically you have to take detailed history to find out if this person actually had some uh, injury okay so coming to the clinical features could be a diabetic um, elderly <clears throat> And uh, these people will have some pain and stiffness in the shoulder. That's what they'll come with. They may have an old history of injury which has healed. But they, uh, currently, uh, early stage if they're coming, they'll have worse pain at night. Stiffness which is limited to abduction and internal rotation of the shoulder. Later, the pain may be present at all times and the movement of the shoulder are severely limited. When you check, there can be more than one tender spot. So basically, uh, the differential diagnosis for you should be uh, shoulder joint tuberculosis which is rare. And this is uh, the terminology they're using for the shoulder joint tuberculosis without any pus is Kerry Sika. That should be your DD. Investigations basically you can do x ray, it will show rarefaction, that is reduction in density of the head of the humerus. There can be degenerative changes also in this acromioclavicular joint. Okay. Head of humerus also, uh, some things you will see, uh, and acromioclavicular joint also, you will see some degenerative changes. The treatment is that it is a self-limiting disease. It can uh, go away by itself, but the uh, the pain will go. Probably the stiffness will stay. Okay, and uh, I think later on, after two years or something, even that stiffness can go nicely if you mobilize, because that that's the natural course of the disease. That's what they say. Uh, but, but current concept they are saying is though the pain goes, the stiffness may not improve. So you'll have to treat. So how will you treat? Analgesics, hot fermentation, physiotherapy, intra-articular injection of hydrocortisone, shoulder mobilizing exercises. You can try some manipulation under anesthesia. Uh, natural course of the disease is like we told you, it will recover in two years. They are saying that. And uh, you can also try arthroscopic surgery. Okay. That's it about frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis or periarthritis shoulder. Bye-bye.